So in the implosion theory text short, I gave a condensed version of Victor Schauberger's implosion concept, attempting to help visualize it at least in part by demonstrating the pressure differentials in and around a vortex. Essentially, the vortex as a dynamic system has a pressure gradient with a very low pressure in the center, with this pressure increasing radially to a maximum at the periphery. In the experiment, a floaty ball that is normally buoyant and floats at the top of the water, and a denser golf ball which normally sinks to the bottom experience equal and opposite pressures. Activating the motor, the floaty ball sinks to the bottom while the golf ball levitates and rotates around the inside wall of the cylindrical container. The extreme centrifugal forces sling much of the water against the inside surface, rarefying the region in the center and creating a low pressure there. And because the water pressure there is low, it no longer equalizes the ambient air pressure inside the jar. The air pressure, along with the motion of the water, creates a nearly cylindrical column of air that pushes straight down. The floaty ball is both pushed down by the pressure as well as sucked down and rotated by the shear forces of the surrounding water flow. This downdraft of air in the center generates an equal and opposite increase in water pressure and an updraft around the periphery of the rotating column. The denser golf ball is caught up in this updraft and rotates just above the sunken floaty ball and around the inside surface due to the centrifugal force. As the rotation slows, the centrifugal force decreases and the water pressure in the central region begins to rise again. This causes the floaty ball to rise back to the top, and simultaneously the golf ball passes the floaty ball on its way back down to the bottom of the container as the pressure in the peripheral region decreases. Now from our understanding of these forces involved here, we can expand this concept and create a levitating, rotating ring by attaching several golf balls to the bottom of the plastic ring as shown. A ring structure is used as the vacancy in the center is large enough so as to not interfere with the downdraft column. Care must also be taken to attach the golf balls such that each ball lightly touches the inside surface of the container for the greatest stability. As the device is activated, the golf balls on the ring are caught up in the aforementioned updraft, carrying the ring with them. As we can see, the ring floats and rotates about a third of a way up the container, revolving rapidly around the downdraft column. The lifting height is greater the more water there is in the container. So the lifting force is dependent upon both the hydrostatic as well as the hydrodynamic pressures. As the speed is slowed, gravity again regains influence over the water and the ring from the centrifugal force. The water then begins to follow a more centripetal motion and the familiar conical vortex funnel emerges from the cylindrical column. As the rotation slows even further, the lower part of the funnel begins to recede upwards as the water pressure steadily equalizes again, with the ring settling at the bottom. The ring may actually remind us of various accounts of flying discs or UFOs, which rotate rapidly as they hover, ascend, and fly about in the air. So do some of these UFOs utilize these same implosion principles as part of their propulsion systems? Also interesting is that the grass and shrubs underneath where the crafts were spinning are often shown to have been twisted into a type of centripetal pattern with the direction of the spin in the exact same direction that the craft was spinning. How does this happen? Does the centripetal force of the crafts generate torsion waves which are able to twist the very fabric of, of time and space allowing the exertion of a force over a distance? These are indeed interesting questions in and of themselves.
But ultimately, we can see that this simple device is essentially an implosion device in its most basic form. A machine which converts the energy of a rotating fluid, in this case water, into a vertical lifting force. According to calculations based on Schauberger's concepts, even a small 8 inch diameter implosion device built to proper specifications will be capable of lifting 57 tons when operating at an angular speed of 10,000 RPM. And since the lifting force is proportional to the square of the rotational velocity, then a speed of 20,000 RPM would generate a force of 228 tons. And all of this from simply rotating a fluid at a very fast speed and in a prescribed manner. This is a force which is truly in the megalithic range. Schauberger stated that he was not the first to discover these profound principles, but believed that he had only rediscovered knowledge that ancient peoples had been familiar with from their own observations and studies of the dynamic forces of air and water. And if such is the case, then we might wonder if some of the ancients used these same implosion principles to literally float heavy stones that were used in the construction of their monuments. And if so, how? Did ancient coastal societies create huge winding canals or flumes, coaxing the water into centripetal motion with flow veins similar to those in Schauberger's log flumes? How would they have made the water to flow with the necessary force and speed? Did they channel water from a great height and into these canals or flumes? We might imagine a setup similar to that in the following diagram in which a waterfall is the source of motive power. A waterfall, even significantly smaller than Niagara Falls, could produce more than enough energy to move weights the size of used in many of the ancient megaliths. This even considering that Niagara Falls itself is not even in the top 10 as far as height in the world. A relatively modest 50,000 gallon per second flow rate would generate well over 53 million joules of energy each second. This is enough energy to lift a 500 ton stone to a height of 18 feet even at a 50% conversion efficiency. This would be true even with conventional methods. If this energetic flow could be channeled into a constricted space like a canal or a flume, it would produce a very energy dense channel. But if taken a step further via implosion methods, which would employ flow veins and spherical or oval shapes to coerce the water to flow in a powerful centripetal manner, then the efficiency of the hydrodynamic system would be dramatically increased such that even the same or even less amount of water could propel masses well into the upper megalithic weight range. The effects could theoretically be increased even further if the over unity energy claims of implosive systems are true. But is there still another possible way to enhance the cent centripetal energy of water other than by gravitational power of a waterfall? On this channel, I've discussed the notion of harnessing the energy of sound vibrations to assist in the movement of heavy objects. And in my video, Victor Schauberger's Repulsing, I demonstrated that the vortex is essentially another manifestation of rhythmic mechanical energy, just as the sound vibrations of music. And like sound vibrations, the energy of a vortex can be steadily increased by intermittent pulses of mechanical energy. Could powerful sound vibrations be coupled to a vortex? And if so, could a type of resonance be established which would add energy to the vortex, gradually increasing its kinetic energy and resulting ability to lift and carry objects? This seems plausible as we know that vibrations can generate vortices and vortices can generate vibrations. So as we can see, there are many questions and angles to explore 
in a world of possibilities both ancient and modern. In an upcoming video, I will attempt to build a slightly larger version of the implosion ring, which can run at even higher speeds, and which will have a modified ring upon it, which I can add weights. This should allow the further validation and quantification of the relationship between angular speed and vertical lifting force. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned.